Welcome to our Research Like a Pro with DNA Q&A series. And our question we'll talk about is, how do I determine whether a DNA segment belongs on the maternal or paternal chromosome in DNA Painter? So if you've been trying to map your chromosomes in DNA Painter, you might wonder how you're supposed to tell. And so we'll go through some examples and talk about that in this short little video. So here's a key concept that's really important we understand just in our genetic genealogy in general, that DNA testing companies don't know whether a segment is on the maternal or the paternal copy of a chromosome unless they do phasing. And from the Isaac Wiki, we learn that phasing is the task or process of assigning alleles, the A's, C's, T's, and G's to the paternal and maternal chromosomes. Now, also from the Isog Wiki, we learn that Ancestry and MyHeritage are currently the only two companies which phase the data before assigning shared matches. And when you download your raw data from Ancestry or MyHeritage to upload to third-party sites, you receive a file of unfazed data. So just something good to keep in mind. So let's take a look at some chromosomes. Uh, some chromosome browsers. And this is my heritage here in this little image here. And on my heritage, you can compare up to seven different people and look to see where the segments overlap and where you might have triangulation. Now, I purposely selected my mother, Anna Mae, who's the red, Lucretia, who is a cousin on my paternal side. She's a quite close cousin, so we know exactly how we relate. My daughter, Nicole, who is the yellow, and another paternal cousin, Dillard Victor Parker. Lucretia and Victor have both given me permission to use their names. And so when we look at chromosome one, we see that I share an entire copy from my mother, the entire chromosome, which makes sense because I inherited an entire copy from her of chromosome one as she's my mother. I also gave Nicole an entire copy of that chromosome um, to her. So we're going to match the whole thing on chromosome one. Now, Lucretia only matches me on a couple places on chromosome one, a few places on three, four, five. And then Victor actually shares some DNA with me further on down my chromosome map down here. So you might be wondering why, if this looks like these overlap, they would not have the little box drawn around them like my heritage does to show a triangulated segment. Well, my heritage doesn't show partially triangulated segments. It only shows fully triangulated. So all four of these people would have to have that be on the same copy of the chromosome, maternal or paternal. And since they've already phased the data, they know that this is my mother, this is my daughter, and they know this is paternal. And so this is not a triangulated segment because we've got maternal, maternal, and paternal, even though it looks like it overlaps. So this is helpful on my heritage, but you would need to be aware that in working with 23andMe data or family tree DNA data or GEDmatch data that's been uploaded from these other websites that's probably unfazed from all of them, you maybe would run into problems trying to decide which chromosome people are actually matching on, the maternal or the paternal copy. Now let's see what happens if we take off the two paternal matches and we just have my mother and my daughter. And again, the blue or the yellow goes all the way across as does the red. But now we do see some triangulated segments between the three of us. And so you'll see that Nicole on the areas that she does not uh, triangulate with my mother's DNA would have received DNA from her father. And so Oh, I'm sorry, from, from my father. I get that straight. So she would be sharing DNA with me from my father. And the parts that are circled here would be from my mother. And that's why they triangulate. So it's really important to know whatever company you're working at, working with, exactly how they are defining these triangulated segments, how they are showing the chromosomes, and really understanding what is going on. Now we need to do a little bit of going back to the basics with uh, the science and talk a little bit more about these alleles, the A, T, C's, and G's. So let's do a little review. 
A base pair is two chemical bases bonded to one another forming a rung of the DNA ladder. And here is the ladder. The DNA molecule consists of two strands that wind around each other like a twisted ladder. This would be the blue. Each strand has a backbone made of alternating sugar and phosphate groups. Attached to each sugar is one of four bases. So we have the adenine, the cytosine, the guanine, or the thymine as represented by the different letters. And the two strands are held together by hydrogen bonds between the bases with adenine forming a base pair with thymine and cytosine forming a base pair with guanine. So the DNA companies use the sequencing of the A, C, G, and Ts to analyze our DNA and do shared matching. So what does this mean to us as genealogists? Well, small segments could present a problem for us because they could be valid or false. And what we want to watch for is anything below 10 centimorgans, because this is where the problem could come into play. So without phasing, which attempts to divide the chromosomes into maternal and paternal, the matching algorithm can form any matching segment using the results from both mom and dad. So here we have a compared segment. And this image is courtesy of Blaine Bettinger. You can go read more about it on his blog post listed here. So here we see a segment that seems to be made up of, you know, just a viable segment. But if we look at the unfazed results, we can see that the T was taken from, let's say this was maternal. The T here is taken from paternal and the G from paternal, paternal, maternal, maternal, paternal, paternal. So we see that it's weaving back and forth between maternal and paternal because it simply doesn't know which one it is. Now, when we take those same that same sequence and use it with a phased, um, when we have a phasing algorithm in play, then we see a true segment that is quite different from the segment that we started with. And so we need to be careful. This is just an example of how the alleles can weave back and forth and can give us a completely false segment. Now, as I mentioned, some testing companies do phase the DNA test before shared matching, and they use various algorithms, including population studies, which is what Ancestry uses. And if you do have a parent and a child at GEDmatch, a DNA kit can be phased using the phasing tool. And I did this with my kit and my mother's kit to get a phased kit for my father that I can use at GEDmatch. So a great way to visualize the DNA segments we share with a match and to make discoveries about an unknown match is to create a chromosome map on DNA Painter. And I'm going to show you really specifically how to do this and how it came up with kind of an exciting new discovery for me. So I have created a new a brand new chromosome map for my match, Victor Parker. And I want to have this one be a fairly specific chromosome map. Victor and I share DNA on my Dillard Royston line. And I want to try to find matches that are either through Cynthia Dillard and Thomas Royston or their parents. And so that's what I've decided to do this new map, how the focus be for this new map. And so when you start a new map, you'll be asked to create a name. I selected Victor. You have to select male or female. So I selected male and that makes a difference for the X chromosome. And then you can add a description. And that's where I added what this map will focus on. And then notice in this chromosome map that we have the blue representing paternal matches and the pink representing maternal matches. This is what we have to determine before we paint a match. We can say unknown if we don't know, but it's better if we actually figure it out and are able to assign either paternal or maternal. So just to give you a little bit of an idea where I am and where Victor is, here's Victor and here's his lineup to Cynthia and Thomas. And this would be me. I come through Robert, he comes through Sarah Royston. And so you'll see he's two generations closer to our targeted couple, which is good because he has better matches than I do, which is why I am creating a chromosome map for him. Now, one of the things that I did was I had Victor upload his DNA to all the testing companies. 
So his DNA is on GEDmatch, my heritage and family tree DNA, as well as Ancestry. And so I've been able to use segment data from several of those companies to cr create a chromosome map or to get started with one. I ran the hybrid auto segment tool on gen genetic affairs, and I used what I had, which was his matches are on family tree DNA, my heritage and gen match. And so here you can see clusters of matches that are all on one segment. I did a control find to find my own name so I could find a relevant cluster. And you can see that I also have my kit on several different websites. And so I show up in the same place right here. And interesting just to see a little bit different numbers for uh, this. I'm not sure why we have a zero there, <clears throat> something with the reporting. But I decided I wanted to start mapping all of these other matches on this specific chromosome because I hypothesized this would be my paternal chromosome and it would also be Victor's paternal chromosome. And these people would also be going back to Thomas and Cynthia Royston. So once I determine a match that I want to paint, I just simply click on it and it will take me to their match page. So here's a match, and this one actually was nice because he had a tree, and I could see exactly what his line was back to Cynthia Dillard and Thomas Beverly Royston, and it also identified that this match was on Victor's father's side, and so that was helpful. So when you are painting a match from MyHeritage or from any other testing company, you always want to see if there is some type of a clue to find out if it's paternal or maternal. Sometimes it will tell you if there are trees. It may not tell you specifically. And so you'll have to look at trees and try to figure that out. But really the best way to do that is to look at the shared matches and see if you recognize any of the shared matches, which could tell you pretty quickly whether it's a paternal or a maternal match. Now, if you scroll down, you can get eventually to the chromosome browser, and here you can see that Victor and this match share seven DNA segments, and up under advanced, you can download that shared DNA info. So what do you do with this downloaded info? Well, it's really good to be organized with your DNA files, and I like to have a file folder for each test taker, and then inside that I would have my heritage, ancestry, family tree, DNA, and such. And so in this case, I had a folder for Victor, then my heritage, and then I saved all the different files to that folder. Once you have saved it, you can open the Excel file, select all the data using uh, your control A to select it all, and then copy it all using your control C, and then you paste that into your chromosome map. And I'll show you how to do that in a couple slides. So once I had done this for the match, you can see those same segments all show up here. And there were seven segments painted, and I got to identify them as belonging to the paternal line. Now let me show you a little bit more using my own match to Victor. So when I went to copy and paste, um, here's what it looks like in the Excel file once I copied it, and then I simply paste it all that in. It comes in perfectly. And that's all you have to do. Copy and paste. So easy to do. And then you can either preview the segment, see what it looks like when you lay those on top of your map, and then you can save it. And when you go to save it, you get to decide. You get to say, I know how I'm connected or I don't know yet. And you get to put in your name or whatever name you want to. You could anonymize it if you'd like or a DNA kit number, username. And then you can click on a group. And so I had already put in the group of Thomas B. Royce and Cynthia Dillard. So I just clicked on that to add that. If you have a different group, then you can add that. And I can say link these segments to an ancestor I've already added. So then that becomes part of my map when I say save match. And so here we're starting to get more segments painted. Clicking on this one, segment 11, you can see that this part is for me. And interestingly enough, we're going to add to that. So going back to this hybrid auto segment tool and working down this list of matches, there's an unknown match. 
and I do not know how, who this person is or how they connect. And when I click on them, I see that they have a decent amount of DNA shared, but they have no shared surnames or locations. But when I click on shared DNA matches, I was a shared match and others that I recognized. So I determined that this was most likely on the Royston Diller paternal line. It could be another descendant of Cynthia and Diller, Cynthia and Thomas, or it could be a match through one of their parents. I just don't know yet. So what did I do with this one? Well, I decided since this was unknown that I would add a group and I called it unknown Dillard or Royston. And so I gave it a different color. It's green. And if I do discover who this match is and discover they are a descendant of Thomas and Cynthia, I can certainly change them to a blue. And notice how segment 11 is pretty strong for all these different um, matches. And that makes sense since I'm using the hybrid auto segment that we're all, all showing up here on segment 11 or chromosome 11 in, you know, roughly the same place. So continuing to paint my heritage matches from the hybrid auto segment cluster report, here's my process. View the match on my heritage, view shared matches to ensure it was the match on the paternal side. I downloaded the segment data and pasted it into DNA Painter. Well, in the process of doing this and looking at shared matches, sometimes I had to scroll down quite a bit to find shared matches that I recognized because I wanted to make sure they were really paternal and in the correct line. I discovered a match for a Royston ancestor who was two generations back. This was a match I'd known about years ago, but had completely forgotten about. And their tree actually goes back to Thomas Royston's grand or yeah, grandfather, Richard Wyatt Royston. And it's a really nice segment. It just so happens that this match as well as Victor are two generations closer. And so they match with a good amount of DNA. And so this match had a good tree and I knew who had researched it. And so I felt good about adding that as coming down from Richard Wyatt Royston. And I could have put his wife there, except for she's unknown. This is uh, early, mid 1700s Virginia in a severely burned county. So, so it's good that we just have this much. So as I continue to build this map, looking at shared matches on my heritage, looking at trees, I'm hoping to keep filling out this map and keep making discoveries on Victor's line. And now that I have this shared match, I can go and look for other matches that could be to Richard Wyatt Royson or the in-between generation. All right, so Identifying shared segments with the hybrid auto segment tool turned out to be a really good way to start that chromosome map. And just remember this key point that when you are painting the segments, you've really got to look at family trees and shared matches to determine if it's maternal or paternal. When we are working further back in time and we don't know these matches well, we don't want to mess up our map by assigning someone to the wrong copy of their chromosome. So good luck with chromosome mapping.